There are a lot of exotics in Destiny now, so I figured it would be fun to rank them all on their PvE capabilities. This one is all about primaries, and I have heavies and specials already up on the channel. This one's going to be a long one, so I'll try to get through each weapon as fast as possible. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy. All right, starting off with the tier list, we're going to have F is never used, D is just bad, C is mid, which doesn't mean bad, it's just kind of okay. B is going to be good, A is very good, and then S is going to be meta defining. Starting off, we're going to have Ace of Space. Ace of Space is a very, very fun hand cannon. It's pretty strong. It basically is just a bunch of perks in one. It has Firefly. It has Third Eye. It has Kill Clip essentially on it. It has so many perks just built into this hand cannon alone, and it makes it just pretty good. In most scenarios of PvE, you aren't really going to take this over anything else. A lot of legendary hand cannons are going to be better because they just can open up your exotics a lot. So that's why I'm going to throw it in C tier. This, I think, is a perfect representation of C tier. It's not bad. It's not that good. It's just kind of in the middle ground. It has a bunch of decent perks on it. And if it's the only gun you have, you can definitely use it. But you're almost going to want to take any other option. Now, next up is Bad Juju. Now, Pulse Rifles in the current season are not the greatest. This is going to be based on the current season. Once Final Shake comes out, I'll probably have another tier list towards the end of that. But right now, Pulse Rifles aren't the strongest. But even with that, Bad Juju is still pretty good. This is going to feed you a ton of super. It reloads the gun when you get killed kills and it also grants more damage a bunch of very good perks stacked on top of each other and getting that extra super energy is very nice if you are playing a build around that with this pair with celestial nighthawk is extremely fun this season with the buff nighthawk got that's why i'm gonna throw it in the b tier with pulse rifles get a buff i definitely think this could be moved up to a tier potentially even s tier depending on how everything's going to work out with prismatic and such because kinetic will also grant you transcendence energy and this does do kinetic damage right now though it's just kind of good you don't really see a lot of people use it but you cannot deny the perks on it are very very strong and next up is centrifuge and this weapon on paper seems pretty good you can charge it up and then you're going to blind enemies when you get kills with it the problem is you can't reload you have to sprint to reload the gun you have to keep that meter up it can be a little hassle to play into if you do play into it correctly it can be pretty decent but in my opinion guns with volt shot can do with this gun can already do just a little bit better yes it, the volt shot can't blind enemies but me personally if i'm ever going to blind something i normally would just use a story into grenade launcher so for me i'm just going to throw it in the c tier it is a decent weapon i just don't think you're going to use it over other options that we do have the next up is cerberus plus one this is basically a shotgun auto rifle it's really not that good on paper it sounds like it could be cool because yeah, it's just a fully automatic shotgun but it does do like primary level of damage it's not anything like a special weapon as of right now in the game i would recommend probably to never use this thing at all in pve it is going to be getting a buff but i think that's more so for pvp there are way way better options and if you're pulling up with the Cerberus plus one yes i guess you can make it work but overall just use any other auto rifle and you'll be completely Fine. next up is collective obligation this kind of falls into the same category of pulse rifles aren't the strongest right now but even with that this one is still very very good it can do all the void debuffs with volatile suppress and weaken it plays into your void subclass extremely well and i think just for the sure build crafting potential alone it's going to go in the a tier yes you do have to play into void with prismatic this could potentially be even better because you can use void even more often while running the other subclass but even in the game currently it is still one of the best pulse rifles again if you do play into void and having your primary just be able to apply all those effects is very very strong the next up is crimson now crimson is the red death that we currently have in the game we are going to be getting red death in the final shape but this gun is just kind of okay it can work well with lucky pants with this burst fire rate when you get kills you'll heal you can also reload the gun on precision kills it is pretty good has some pretty good perks also hand cannons are obviously very strong in the meta right now as well and overall i think i'm just going to put this in the b tier i could see the argument moving in for a i think there are better hand cannons out there having the heal is very nice but again you can just get something like luna's howl kill clip that can also heal you and provide incandescent play into solar builds it's still a very very good option especially if you do pair it with lucky pants and again i could see the argument moving in for a but for me personally, I'm just going to throw it in B. The next up is Cryosthesia. Now, this is a pretty fun sidearm. You get a kill, you can reload, you can freeze enemies. This works really well with Whisper of Rennie. But in my opinion, there are a lot of better freeze options out there. You have things like Agers. You have things in this tier list that we'll get into later that are for sure going to be better. So I think overall, I'm going to throw this in the C tier. It is decent and you definitely can't play into it and it's fun, but I would almost recommend always using one of the other freeze options that we will get into later down the list. The next up is Dead Man's Tail. Now this is mainly a PvP exotic. It does get a damage increase if you're hip firing. It can also increase that rate of fire, but even with all that, other scout rifle options are pretty much gonna be better and I would almost recommend not really ever using this thing. It is very fun. There are some use cases with things like Vorpal maybe just shooting a champion down with this. So I'm just gonna throw it in D tier. It's 
really not that good for PvE. Again, it is fun. It's one of my favorite exotics. It's definitely one of the coolest exotics, but and no one is really going to be using this at pve when there are just better options out there the next up is devil's ruin now this was pretty interesting because it has the chart shot and it can stun unstoppable champions even with that though it's still not the greatest thing in the game yes i guess it's kind of cool if you want to shoot down a major it's like a mini 1000 voices it doesn't do as much damage as 1000 voices it, it, it's just kind of all right so again i'm just gonna throw this in the c tier I don't think it's anything too crazy, but I know there's some builds out there. If you pair this with something like Mechaneer's Trick Sleeves, I know it can do a ton of damage, but you really have to build into it to get to that. And just on its own, it's usable. It's just not the greatest thing in the game. The next up is Fighting Lion. Now you can do some fun things with this, like with something like Risper of Rending, but the added player on this is just kind of eh, the single target is just kind of eh. It's really, really not the strongest thing in the game. I would pretty much always recommend taking anything else over this. So I'm just gonna throw it in the D tier. I'm just gonna put it in bad because again, you can kind of just cool things with it, but they're still not gonna be the greatest things in the game. It's more just a fun exotic to build around and not really a good exotic. The next up is Final Warning. Now Final Warning actually got a lot of play this season due to a lot of the artifact perks. On its own, this weapon is also still very, very good. You can unravel targets. It has a lot of precision damage. And again, in those artifact perks, make threat links, everything like that. It is one of the strongest sidearms in the game, in my opinion, and you can also play into strand builds with it. Even if you don't play into a strand build, it's still very, very good. And I think I'm going to rank this in the A tier. I maybe can see the argument for moving it to B tier because I know the artifact perks are making it shine a lot this season currently. But again, even without those, it's still nice because you're going to have the unravel effect. It still does a ton of damage on its own. And if you need a decent sidearm to use, I would definitely give this one a shot. Now, next up is Graviton Lance. So Graviton Lance has gotten so many buffs. Its catalyst is also crazy. You get Vorpal and you get Turnabout. It ad clears an entire room it is one of the best primary pv exotics in the game i think this is going to be our first s tier it is for sure meta defining it like i said it can do pretty much anything you want it to do it plays into volatile rounds or any void build also extremely well i pretty much would always take graviton over collective obligation unless you are really really playing into those void burbs and even with that just the sure at clear potential of graviton i think makes it more crazy it is going to be received on a nerf in final shape but i still think it's going to be very good it probably will still be s tier and overall it is one of the best and coolest looking exotics in the entire game the next step is hard like this is pretty much just an auto rifle that can change elements this used to be pretty Pretty strong when match game was a thing but now that match game's out you don't really need to match elements a lot anymore it can ricochet and the ricochets do a little bit more damage if you hit an enemy but overall again the main appeal of this is just to change elements i'm just gonna throw it in d tier you're not really using this at all anymore i guess if you do want to change elements or really play those ricochets you can make it work and it does have a little use potential so that's why again just gonna throw it in d i don't think it's a never use but it definitely isn't good and next up is hawk moon now, hawk moon is a very fun exotic you can build up those shots that last shot does a lot of damage overall in pve though this thing is definitely not the greatest it's ad clear is pretty bad compared to other exotics or just other legendary primaries in general that chart shot you get is very very strong but overall, even if you use this as something like Lucky Pants, other hand cannon options are going to be better. And I don't really see a world where I'm ever going to be taking this into PvE. So that's why I'm going to throw it in the D tier. Yes, if you do play into that shot, it can be kind of decent. But playing into that shot is just not worth it. You can just use literally anything else and it will do better. In my opinion, just running something that can add clear and then just having a sniper for that high damage shot is going to be better pretty much every single day now next up is higher arcanese now when this came out a lot of people kind of just wrote it off but it did gain some popularity and it is one of the strongest bows in the game in my opinion you can build up those charges you can make your circle then just have your tracking arrows that can do a ton of damage you can pretty much just have that up infinitely if you are playing into it correctly and overall it is a very very strong and very very fun to use weapon you do have to be pretty stationary with it that is the kind of downside of it you can't really move a lot with it because you really want to sit in the spot but in something like a gm that's obviously pretty easy to do that's why i'm gonna throw it in the a tier in my opinion it is one of the best exotics just to sit in the back of the map and just lay down a barrage of arrows and you can just pretty much kill anything now next up is la monarch and la monarch is another exotic bow you can apply poison this works extremely well with void builds that also has overload which is very very nice i don't think this is a meta defining exotic but with all the stuff built into its kit the way it can play in the volatile the poison everything I think this is definitely an A tier. This is going to be a common theme with the bows. Almost all the exotic bows are very, very good for PvE. And with that, you pretty much just have the solar one and the void one, and we'll get into the other ones later. Now, next up is Lumina. Now, Lumina is an interesting exotic. On its own, it's pretty much just a hand cannon, but when you get those noble rounds, it becomes one of the best support weapons in the game. 
you can reload the gun when you get noble rounds and then when you shoot a noble round at a teammate you will heal them and give them a 35 percent damage drop one of the highest damage buffs in the game and you can constantly shoot this you can hold up to six charges and it is used on a lot of speed runs day ones even things like pantheon i even ran this to pantheon it is very very strong and i think this is very much a meta defining exotic just being able to passively give your teammates a 35 percent damage increase and the ability to heal them and it also plays into some builds like with ember of benevolence it is ridiculously strong it can even play in the noble rounds and with the new exotic warlock helmet coming it's only going to get better and i think i forgot to mention that the damage buff that your teammates gets it also applies to you too so inherently the hand cannon just does 35 percent more damage at all time and obviously in dps situations it is just ridiculously good and next up is malfeasance now malfeasance is very very strong it's really good against taken it's also just really good against everything else if you shoot five shots in it all the shots will blow up it does a ton of damage you can get vorpal for the catalyst and if you play into lucky pants it is one of the strongest hand cannons you can use for that specific build on top of all that it also has unstoppable and if someone is using wither horde it will do more damage to the target that's affected by wither horde again overall i think this is going to be a s tier exotic being able to stun a champion being able to do a ton of single target damage it's also just decent for aggro too being able to play into a build like lucky pants it is very very strong and it can also synergize with things like with a horde as well and next up is mida this is a pretty basic scout rifle it has bad ad clear it doesn't really do anything super great pretty much any legendary scout rifle is going to do better but you do get a mobility boost so in that case i'm going to throw it in d tier it's definitely a bad weapon but if you want to use it just to run faster you, know, you can do that this plus eager edge you'll be zooming around the map and next up is monte carlo and monte carlo is a very fun exotic you get melee energy back you can proc the bayonet now with catalyst it does a ton of damage it is very very heavily played into melee builds and if you are playing into that it gets even stronger if pugilist was an exotic it is this one and i think i'm gonna throw it in the a tier spot the bayonet damage is very nice on top of that you also are going to be getting that increased damage when you get a melee kill so your gun can kill things your melee can kill things overall it's just a very very fun build crafty weapon and it's just also a pretty solid gun in general and next up is necrochasm now necrochasm was one of my favorite exotics in d1 still one of my favorite exotics in d2 but it's really not the greatest yes it can chain curse the raw and it can also pair with necrotic grips it's very very fun but bungie themselves has even said this gun is weaker than what they want it to be they are going to be buffing it in final shape they're also giving it a new catalyst as well very excited for that i think it might potentially even go to an s tier exotic but for now it's just kind of b tier it's decent for ad clear but if you need a solid ad clear exotic primary there are way way better options right now the next up is no time to explain that this weapon it does refund ammo on precision hits you can get your little buddy to also help you shoot even with all that it's not the creatives i feel like this is more for a pvp exotic or just having like a fun buddy build with something like arc soul but again it's not going to be the craziest thing so i'm just going to throw this in d tier i can see the argument we wouldn't foresee but for me personally it's just kind of bad i absolutely never use this thing in pve at all i imagine most of you all are the same and the, the other interesting thing is that it plays into stasis so if you shoot something that's frozen it refunds ammo but it does kinetic damage it'd be cool maybe if it did stasis damage you could play into something like headstone if they gave it that I, i'm not i don't know it's just it's just kind of a weird gun in my opinion and i think they're Pretty much a lot better options but if you do want to play into that buddy build it has that going for it and next up is osteo sugar now this with the catalyst can get a huge mag it spreads poison it's pretty decent at clear i think there are better at clear options now with some of the nerfs that it has gotten but even with those nerfs it can still play to necrotics everything like that i'm gonna throw it in the a tier i still think it is a very very good smg i would recommend using some of the other s tier options now but overall it's still very very strong for that kinetic slot now outbreak perfected now this is an interesting one because you can craft it now it can get things like rewind rounds which is probably its best in slot option it is very good for taking out single targets right now in the game it is honestly very very strong and it's getting buffed in final shape so i think in final shape it could potentially become an s tier exotic right now in the game i'm definitely going to throw it in a it's very very good for doing additional dps for everyone's out of ammo it's also just good for act clear because you spread nanites everywhere if you're taking something like a gm with three people running it you could just pretty much use your primary the entire time you don't have to really do anything else very very strong love this weapon this was my favorite weapon in Destiny 1, and it's slowly becoming my favorite one in D2, especially when the buffs come out. Now, next up is Polaris Lance. Now, Polaris Lance, with this season, for sure, is an S tier. It is very, very strong. If we strip the artifact perks away, it's obviously going to drop down some. So, I'm going to, based off the fact that we don't have artifact perks, 
but even with that it is still good and most builds with polaris slants that did work with the season can still work in the future it's just going to take a lot longer to get those ignites instead of five shots it's going to take your shooting around 10 but if you are playing into it I guess it kind of can be okay just to spread ignitions everywhere. So I'm just going to throw it in the B tier. It has Firefly. It's decent for act clear. It's decent for single target because, again, you are just applying the Scorch. It has unlimited ammo if you are landing your precision shots. But again, if you do use those artifact perks, it is for sure an S tier. But if you don't, I think it's just kind of B tier exotic. A quick silver storm. Now, this used to be an S tier exotic. They did nerf it. Even with the nerf, it's still very, very good. I definitely think it did knock it down to A because it does take a lot longer to load those grenade shots up. But those grenade launcher shots are very, very powerful. It's basically a primary weapon that has infinite special ammo. You just have to build the charges up for it. And I could even still see the argument of moving it to S tier. But I think I'm just going to put it in A with the nerf that it did get. The next up is Rat King. Now, Rat King is, in my opinion, a very, very strong exotic. Obviously, it's just a sidearm. It's going to kind of get looked over. But with Rat King, if you have the catalyst, when you get a kill, you're going to get a ton of benefits. I mean, you're going to heal. You're going to go invisible. If you stack this with a bunch of teammates, it just shreds through in enemies you get such an increased fire rate increased magazine size when you reload it can do so much for you and just taking this into a raid with six people and just like an ad clear encounter i mean it can shred you all heal you all go invisible nothing can shoot you you're pretty much unkillable it's very very strong now do i think this is strong at some other exotics in a tier of course not but it is definitely a good b tier contender in my opinion i could see the argument moving it to a if you are running with a six stack but overall it is very very good even on its own just having that ability to proc invisibility and heal very very good and it's definitely something i would not look over now next up is revision zero now this weapon's in an interesting spot it has barrier capabilities but there is a better barrier option and there's also another exotic here that kind of does what this does in pretty much the same way it's a little different and i think that exotic is also better right now what this does is if you just get precision shots you can build your sniper shot up and it could do some okay damage you can't crap this and you can build around that but overall i don't really foresee anyone really running revision zero that much yes the two bursts also did get buffed it can do a pretty good amount of damage but overall, I'm just going to throw this in the C tier spot. It's kind of just mid in my opinion. I, I think you're going to take pretty much any other option over this thing. And just to skip around a little bit, I guess, to further solidify that point, you have things like Wish Ender, which is the other barrier exotic. It does an absurd amount of damage. It has barrier. It can see through walls, which I guess is kind of whatever. But this is definitely a meta defined exotic. It is one of the strongest exotic primaries in the game for things like GMs. And if you ever need a barrier option, you're not going to be taking Revision Zero. You're always going to be taking Wishinder. And then if we jump over to Vex Mythic class, this is the other gun where you can build up your charged shots. You can turn it into a linear fusion, whereas Revision Zero is a special. But in my opinion, Vex is going to be better than Revision Zero. Yes, you don't have to get kills with Revision Zero, whereas Vex you do. I think it's easier to get the Vex sacks, in my opinion. And the Vex also does more damage, in my experience. So that's why I'm going to throw Vex in B tier. I don't think Vex is an A tier exotic. It is, I guess, pretty decent. But you're really never going to take Vex over some of these other options. And then if you just take a look at the three right here, where you basically have your primary weapon trying to be a special, Quicksilver is for sure better than both of these. And it is way, way easier to get the special ammo shots in that compared to these two. You literally just shoot an enemy, body shot, headshot, whatever you want, don't have to get a kill. And it will just load grenade launchers up into it. Whereas these, you have to get kills or you have to land precision shots and they don't do nearly as much as something like quicksilver in my opinion and then for the bigger capabilities again just take wish ender it's literally a meta defined exotic it does so much damage and it's just so good now next up is risk runner now this one's also very strong when you take arc damage you do get arc damage resistance it will proc its perks so you can chain lightning everywhere every time you get a kill that chain lightning will constantly reproc so you pretty much have a very very high uptime of that you can even proc this on yourself if you do throw something like an arc grenade with something like prismatic coming out that could potentially be a play because you could still use other stuff but still have something to proc risk runner i don't know how strong that's going to be but i think risk runner is definitely an a tier exotic if there's ever an arc heavy encounter especially if it's an ad clear encounter this is pretty much your go-to option you're going to take reduced damage and it just shreds a ton of enemies and next up is skybunner's oath now this weapon has never really been the greatest thing in the game it's never really had a place it can't scorch enemies now which is pretty nice it can play into solar builds with that and since it is a primary weapon that is a pretty good feature it does more damage to cabal but in reality pretty much any other sky rifle is going to be better but i think since it can't play into scorch and your solar builds i'm going to throw it in c tier it's definitely not the best option and just running something like incandescent can kind of do the same thing but just being able to just shoot the gun and scorch a target to proc some of your fragments, it's very, very nice. 
but in reality i don't really perceive using this over some other options but it is definitely better than something like Mida. The next up is Sturm, and Sturm is pretty much a PvP exotic. It's honestly just an F tier. It doesn't really do anything special. If you do pair it with the Drink, I could maybe see moving it to D. The overcharge shots aren't really that great. You could just take pretty much anything else. But if you aren't using the Drink, I'm going to throw in the F tier. You're definitely taking almost anything else on this list over this. And any legendary hand kit is going to be better too. Now next up is Sunshot. And I think we all know where this is going to go. Regardless of the artifact perks this season, it is still one of the strongest exotics in the game. It's for sure an S tier. It's at clear. It's just insane. It can also apply Scorch on the AOB explosions, which can play in the solar builds. There's not much you really have to say about this. It is obviously going to be a meta defined exotic very very strong and i think it's still gonna be good even after the nerf it's receiving and next up is shuros now on paper this seems pretty good because you can ramp the fire rate up you can heal on kill sometimes but even with all that it's still not the greatest thing in the game since it is a random chance to heal in my opinion that it is going to make it go down some the, the ramping up fire rate is very nice and i guess it's kind of okay for at clear other stuff is going to be better for sure and i'm just going to throw it in the c tier i could see the argument moving it to d I don't really think it's the greatest thing. I think it is better than some of the exotics down here, though. So I'm just going to throw it in C tier. Having the ability to heal is nice. But again, things like Crimson just guarantees the heal. And with Red Death coming out, that is going to be the best option to heal. So overall, it's just kind of in the middle. If it's the only thing you got, sure, you can run it. But I would pretty much always take something else. The next up is Sweet Business. Now, as fun as this exotic is, it's really not that good. If you take something like Active Mulrig, you can for sure shoot forever. But the damage you get from it really isn't that good. You're not really using this thing for Act Clear. It has to charge up to get that fast fire rate. You're definitely not using this for single target damage. And if you're using a primary single target damage, just run something like Outbreak or even some other things that we're going to get later down the list. So I'm just going to throw it in D tier. It's a fun exotic it's really not that good though but if there ever becomes a day where they buff sweet business and this becomes meta i think it will be a very very fun time and next up is symmetry now symmetry you can build up your shots then you can you know, charge the gun up it can hit fire it tracks enemies the tracking does do more damage but overall i, I don't really see you ever using this in pve it's it's not really even used to pvp that much i guess it's a fun option but this taking your exotic slot up over some other stuff you can run i think is a pretty bad idea they are going to be buffing it in final shape but for now I think it's just a D tier option. It's really not the greatest. Yes, you can definitely use it with this charge shot. I don't think it's F, but it's definitely bad. And next up is Taraba or Terra, but however you want to say it. This thing, it's been through a lot. It can now just proc its thing with a little animation instead of having to reload the gun, which is nice. Once you do have its perk proc, it will straight up shred things, but you do have to take damage to get the perk to proc, and it doesn't work in the background. So you have to basically use this gun at all times if you want to take advantage of the exotic perk. Again, the exotic perk, if proc, can do a ton of damage, but it just has such a weird playstyle. I can't perceive ranking it any higher than something like B tier. It is just kind of decent for ad clear. Yes, it can shred a single target if you do play into it, but overall, I, it's a good option. I just think you're going to take other stuff pretty much all the time. And next up is Huckleberry. Now, you get a kill. It's going to refill the magazine. It has OG Rampage, so you get the higher damage stacking. It's a pretty good option for Act Clear. I don't think it's as good as something like Risk Runner because Risk Runner also gives you damage reduction. But I think it kind of sits nice with Terra, but it's just kind of a B tier exotic. They're just kind of both good. Again, I think there are going to be better Act Clear options, something like Osteo Sugar, Outbreak. But it is fun. And when you get that fire rate ramped up, it can definitely shred with the Rampage stacks. But it also just kind of falls into the same ballpark with Necrochasm, where there are just better at clear options for the primary slot. And the next up is Jade Rabbit. Now, this is just an F tier exotic. It's mainly a PvP exotic. It encourages getting body shots, which is something you should almost just never do in PvE. So it's definitely just a never used one. And next up is Last Word, another PvP exotic. Yes, you can use it with Lucky Pants, but outside of that, it's pretty atrocious. I would never recommend anyone use this for PvE. I'm going to throw it in the F tier. If you do use with Lucky Pants, maybe I can see moving it to D. But even if you are using Lucky Pants, there are way, way better hand cannon options on here that you can run, even legendary options. And I would just almost never recommend the last word at all. The next up is the Manticore. Now, the Manticore has gotten a ton of changes. You do get a pretty hefty damage increase if you do have the proc perked in the air. But it's kind of like Taraba. It just has such a weird play style that you have to play around. You have to keep the gun out. You have to float in the air to get the damage increase. But if you do play around it, it is a pretty good option. It's just kind of another good SMG that we have in this B tier slot with the other three. It's not going to outdo anything else in the A and S tier spot. But if you do plan on something like Volatile Rounds or Boy, it can definitely shred. But it still kind of just feels bad to use overall. But if you get the feel for it, you like the feel for it, 
it's definitely a pretty good option. Now, next up is Thorn. Now, Thorn with the hand cannon buffs is very, very good in my opinion. You can pair with the Crowded Grips. It's honestly what I like to pair with the Crowded Grips the most now. But outside of that, it's just a decent option. It can do dot damage. And every time you pick your Soul Devourers up, it can reload the magazine. On top of that, with Catalyst, it can overflow the magazine out so they can have so many shots built into it. And I think with all of that, I can definitely throw it into B tier. Having to never reload, having dot damage, having pretty just high damage general pair with Necrotics, it's very, very fun. It's very good. And I would definitely give Thorn a shot if you haven't tried it with all the buffs that it has gotten, plus it's Catalyst. And next up is Tiku's Divination. This is pretty much hierarchy of needs, brother. You can hit fire it to apply a little dot, then you can shoot the things you hit fire, they will explode. It's very good for Aggro. It's also pretty strong for single target damage as well. It's a crazy good GM weapon. Again, sit in the back, just like hierarchy. Pretty much the exact same things I was talking about for hierarchy is the exact same way you're going to use this thing. And it's very, very strong for in game content. And next up is Tommy's Matchbook. Now, this can scorch enemies. When you do scorch enemies, you unfortunately are going to hurt yourself. It can cause ignition, stuff like that. But with the fact that you have to literally hurt yourself to get this damage perk to proc, you really have to play into healing. And even if you play into that healing, I think there are going to be better options. So overall, Tommy's Matchbook is just kind of a C tier option, in my opinion. It's kind of like Skyburner's Oath. They can both apply scorch for primary weapons, whereas Skyburner's, you don't have to hurt yourself. This one you do, but this one is better for applying more scorch to get ignitions faster. But again, overall, you have to hurt yourself you really have to play into healing and i don't ever foresee myself running this unless i'm just doing a fun build and almost every other option is going to be better if you just start taking it into end game b and next up is touch of malice now touch of malice is a very cool exotic in this game it still has the function d1 where you get to the last shot you're going to hurt yourself but you do a lot more damage it is a lot easier to kill with this than something like tommy smashbook because if you get three kills you will kill with it you can also build up the giant take and blight you can shoot out this pairs with the crotics it has very very strong paramedic dps again you do have to play in stuff like a well or a rift or anything to keep you alive but if you do all that stuff correctly i definitely think this is a b tier exotic i think just with the ease of use of outbreak just everybody can swap to it and you don't really have to worry about living you can just shoot the gun whereas this you really have to focus on trying to keep yourself up you're really only going to use it for primary dps yes there are some fun builds if you do play into that healing but again guns that hurt you you're really not going to take these uh, just on a day-to-day -day basis they're really really niche and play into specific things and i definitely think touch of malice is the best one out of the other options and with this taken blight that it can form it does add an extra little benefit compared to the other guns that hurt you but overall with all that i still think i would recommend using any other exotic up here now next up is traveler shows now this exotic is very fun it is the exotic that just gives you all your abilities back you get kills and you can basically charge the reload up to get a lot of your ability energy back that's pretty much the only thing it's used for if you want abilities use this gun i don't think it's the strongest thing by any means i would even argue it's probably more of a pvp exotic than a pve one but i think with the ability to get your abilities back i definitely think you could throw it in the b tier spot it is a decent option it can also play into your subclass since it does have osmosis with catalyst but again overall i would take pretty much anything else unless you are just building into your utility and now next up is trespasser now trespasser is another sidearm i love this thing this is also one of my favorite exotics in d1 you can get unrepenty proc and now you can just keep it going chain it over and over again it can absolutely slay out in an act clear scenario but again, if we're taking something like Trespasser, you're missing out something like Sunshot, which is just a way, way, way better at clear weapon. It's fun, and I guess if you do build into Arc, it can be kind of okay, but it's just going to kind of be C tier. It's just a decent ad clear option. It doesn't really specialize in anything, but if it's the only thing you have, it can definitely get the job done. The next up on the list is Trinity Ghoul. Now, fitting with the theme of the bows being the best exotic fabrics in the game, this is just like that. This is one of the best ag clear options in the entire game. You get an arc, you get a kill with the bow if you have the catalyst, it will load an arc air up. If you don't have the catalyst, you just get an arc kill with anything else. You really want the catalyst with this weapon, but you're literally going to be able to chain lightning just on every single kill you get. It destroys an entire room of ads. It is very, very strong. I definitely think that is an S tier exotic. It definitely can compete with things like Sunshot and Graviton Lance, and it's arguably better in some ways. This is just the arc version of those two. You really cannot go wrong with using it. The next up is Virgil's Curve, another bow. You can probably imagine where this is going to go. It is very, very good for playing into Stasis builds. When you get a kill, you can load Stasis shots up to make Stasis Crystals. It is so good for playing into fragments and overall it's just a very strong bow in general for ad clear and i think it's going to go in the a tier i don't think it's meta defining in any way and there are other states exotics that you can play into and it will still do very well but this being a bow and just primary ammo 
you can really not go wrong with this. It's very, very good. The next up is Vigilant Swing, and Pulse Rifles are getting a buff, but right now in the game, it's really not that good. I would almost recommend to never use this. It's more of a PvP exotic. You literally want your teammates to die to get benefits out of this, and that's something you never want to happen anywhere in the game, especially PvE. So I would almost never recommend using this thing. The next up is Wicked Implement. Now, I think this gun is a lot better than the hate it gets. I don't think it's meta defined in any way, but being able to slow and freeze enemies just by shooting them, you don't really have to get a kill or anything. Then if you get a kill, you can probably head someone with the catalyst. You get stasis shards, which are going to be very strong when the stasis rework comes through. I think Wicked Implement definitely deserves to go in the feature spot. It is a good option. If you are playing into stasis, I definitely think Virgil's Curve is a better option. But for harder content, something like GMs, just being able to apply slow on tankier targets is very, very good. And I would highly recommend giving this a shot. If you don't use it or if you don't have it, I would definitely recommend getting it. So I think with Final Shape, it could be very, very good. And then finally, we have Wishkeeper. Again, another weapon that a lot of people, I guess, don't really talk about a lot. I think it is very strong. You can build craft into it, depending on how you craft it. It's good for Threatling builds, it's good for spin builds. I've used this build a lot with my Threatling Warlock build. I know a lot of Titans have used the suspend build with things like a Bay and Leap. I would highly, highly recommend giving this bow a shot if you haven't tried it, and I'll definitely make it throw it in the A tier. To me, Wishkeeper is pretty much the Verkless Curve, but Wishkeeper Strand, whereas Verkless Curve is Stasis. They're both just extremely strong options specifically for playing into those builds, and pretty much every other weapon just can't even compete with the amount of utility that these uh, but that is it for my exotic tier list on season of the wish like i said specials and heavies are on the channel if you would like to go watch those i really hope y'all enjoyed and be sure to let me know where you rank stuff as well anyway so that's going to do it all for me i can't wait to see each and every single one of you in final shape thank you all so much for watching and i hope you all have a great day peace